Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Secretary, thank you so much for being here today to answer our questions. Um, I watched some of your testimony yesterday before the Senate, and you said something um, that, that I completely agree with. You talk about the men and women that put their lives on the line every day to protect our homeland, and we have, we have to invest in them. And I couldn't agree with you more and wanted to, um, it reminded me of a, a trip I took this weekend um, with some of my colleagues, went down to Tijuana, Mexico. And we went down there, and wh who we visited were um, veterans that have been deported. I know that the 2018 budget includes millions of dollars to ramp up deportations. And I wanna take a minute to talk about the deportations of our veterans. You know, these are soldiers who have saved lives. These are soldiers, some of who have given their lives. Soldiers who have put service and country above self, many times not even their own country. And they are there to fight and to protect us and America from our homeland. I see them very similar as the men and women who serve in DHS to protect our homeland and our safety. Mr. Secretary, are you aware that non-citizens who sign up to serve in our armed forces are able to go to war and they become automatic citizens if they are killed in the line of duty? I, I am aware of the program uh, that you're referring to, sure. And are you aware that veterans that are deported are later brought back by the U.S. government to the U.S. when they die and they're buried here with full military honors? Well, it depends on the character of service, but sure, I'm, I'm aware of that. Do you think it's right that our veterans have to come back in body bags to be able to come back to this country for which they fought for? Uh, it's not as simple as that. I mean, the, the people you're referring to, uh, and of course, I don't believe under my watch, uh, and this is only by happenstance, but under my watch, we've deported any in this category, I don't think. Uh, so the rest of them were deported previously. Uh, but the point is, uh, there are, there's a great program. In fact, uh, since October 2001, 100, over 118,000 foreigners have joined the U.S. military and been naturalized uh, to be U.S. citizens. Um, they still have to go through, uh, you know, the moral and, 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 and that kind of uh, background checks. But the point is, if they do a year uh, of honorable service, uh, during that period they can request uh, to go through the process of naturalization and all things being equal, they, they don't have to wait uh, for a long period of time. They will be uh, made U.S. citizens. If they're made a U.S. citizen, of course, uh, then they wouldn't be deported uh, because they're U.S. citizens. In the case, as I understand, in the cases of the individuals that have been deported, uh, yes, they served in the U.S. military. And again, it character service counts a lot here. But the point is, they uh, got out of the U.S. military, did not request to become citizens, for whatever reason, and there's a number of reasons they might not have, uh, and then they committed crimes and were apprehended and deported. Okay, well, I won't argue with, uh, I could argue with some of that not being accurate, but um, I only have about a minute left. You know, one of the individuals that I saw was a gentleman named Hector Barajas, who happens to be one of my constituents, who started the deported veterans home, the support home, and he just got a, a pardon from the governor and is somebody who I think would be a great, uh, a great example of somebody that we can now look at to grant citizenship. For the six plus years that he put in, he got two medal of accommodations from the Army. I, I hope that, that your agency will certainly give serious consideration to his application. Um, but you mentioned um, the program. You know, in 2010, there was an agency-wide ICE memo instructing field agents to use their discretion to quote, whether the person or the person's immediate relative has served in the US military, reserves, or National Guard with particular consideration given to those who served in combat. Is I still using this directive to use that discretion, or is that one of those that you've wiped away? They still use that discretion. I was just talking to the ICE, uh, the head of ICE yesterday about this, and um, yes, they still use that. Great, thank you very much.